What up, everybody? It's uh, Eric's online, and um, I just wanted to talk briefly about a topic. Now, this topic may offend some people. Some people may say, oh, yeah, you're an idiot. You're this, you're that. You don't know Illuminati's coming to get us. This, that, and the third. You don't know politics. You don't know how black people really work. You don't know this. You don't know that. You don't read his bills, but I want to talk about Barack Obama and the perception of what a black president is supposed to be now. I watch a lot of YouTube videos daily on um, my free time, so basically I just spread between whatever it's on, like it's online at the moment. And I uh, happened to just run across a video by I think it's Dick 87, and um, he speaks about the president not really being black. And then he goes on to talk about, you know, he's a joke around with his friends or what a black president is supposed to be. But I think that once that happened, once there was a black president, we often never bridged ourselves away from the stereotypes of what a black president was supposed to be. Now, um, there's a famous quote in the movie The Gun, I think. John Wayne, he says that when the legend becomes fact, print the legend. So I think with all these comedians, people saying, you know, if there was a black president, he'd be legalizing weed, he'd be drinking 40s, he'd be smacking bitches, like crazy stuff like that. And I think ever since we've heard that often, it, it basically shaped what we thought a black president should be. So people go on to say, well, Barack Obama's not black. Because no black guy would act like that. No black guy would have a clean record this kind of third. But I think the perception of what black people are supposed to be just completely changed for the black president. Like people think that there are no upstanding citizens, I guess, that are, are of color, African or race or whatever. So they often try to say, well, he can't be black or, you know, he's born on by the system or standard third to basically have a point to say why he's not African American or why it's impossible for him not to put the stereotypes. Now, I think where we really went flawed, and I love this movie to death, it's one of my favorite movies, but in 2003, um, there was a movie by a Chris Rock co-star and Bernie Mac called Head of State, where Chris Rock played an alderman in Washington, D.C., named Mays Gilliam, and the uh, Democratic Party come, they come and uh, basically just pick him out of random. He's supposed to lose the race and not become president to set up for the next um, term so that another guy can uh, run president. But what happens is they have him like basically just a puppet who's just speaking and then at a certain point he gets to Chicago where he meets his brother Bernie Mac, you know, and Bernie Mac says, Well, you know what, you're not keeping it real. You know, maybe you need to speak and not have people speak from the speeches. Because you're saying the same thing over and over. And he goes on to say, Well, you know, to keep it real. And I think right at that point in the movie, I think that's where people will start saying, well, yeah, this is what I want. This is what a president is supposed to be like. So, this is basically the clip right here. Let me finish it. What the hell is he doing? You know, they had a speech written for me about what the people need. But you guys are the people. You know what you need. Better schools. Better jobs. Less crime. How many of you right now work two jobs just to have enough money to be broke? That ain't right. If you work two jobs and at the end of the week, you got just enough money to get your broke ass home. Let me hear you say, that ain't right. How many of you work two jobs just to have enough money to be broke? 
many of you have children that they call stupid? Don't be ashamed. It ain't your fault. I asked my niece the other day, what's four plus four? She said 44. It is. But that ain't her fault. That's the school's fault. Now, if your child's school has old ass books and brand new metal detectives, let me hear you say, that ain't right. That ain't right. That ain't right. It ain't right. And now we got these corporations stealing all the money. They stealing their money, they stealing our money. The pension. You worked for 35 years. You thought you was gonna leave your kids a will. Now you gonna leave them a won't. You show up to get your pension, they give you a pen. Give you a damn pen. Now what the hell am I supposed to do with a pen? I should just stab you in the neck with this pen, Mr. Pension Taker. Get your hand out of my pocket. Taking everybody's pension and nobody going to jail. That's some bullshit. That ain't that some bullshit. Meanwhile, you are. We steal a Big Mac with cheese. Next thing you know, we on death row. How many of you work in a city you can't afford to live in? That ain't right. How many of you work in a mall that you can't afford to shop in? That ain't right. How many of you clean up a hotel you ain't never going to be able to stay in? That ain't right. And we got nurses that work in hospitals that they can't even afford to get sick in. It ain't right. It ain't right. It ain't right. It isn't right. That shit is wrong. It's just wrong. I'm Mace Gilliam, and I'm running the president of the United States of America. No questions. Sorry. Who's next? Mays, Mays, Mays. You go to work. Out of your business. If you need me, you call me, here. Yeah? I'm gonna call you. Get that Are you insane? Me. You can't just go in front of 5,000 people and just, just talk. And you said shit. Presidential candidates do not say shit. You show me a grown man that's never said shit, and I'll show you somebody that's full of shit. Deborah, hold on. What you just did, that was great. Maybe you're right. Maybe we could tailor the speeches more to you. My speeches? Come on, did you hear them? Guys, if this thing is gonna work, then it's gotta fit me. It's gotta be my campaign, okay? This is not your campaign. You will do what I tell you to, or you'll be back in DC on your damn bicycle. Hey, I'm the one that's running for president here. Now, if we're gonna run this campaign, it's gotta go my way. Thank we're you. gonna do it the way I want it done. Now, hold on, I, I, I don't know if that's such a good idea. Hey, if you don't know, you better ask somebody. But they don't know, man, it's the boss, the drama, the, the armor, the city, the farmer, the babies, the mama, the projects, the drugs, the children, the thugs, the kids, the hugs, the love. So yes, after watching that, I think that's what people expect from the president. Not expect, you know, someone that's supposed to be like, you know, like I guess like everyone else, or is supposed to be able to fit in. I think it's more supposed to be supposed to stand out. In terms of that way, instead of just how he is now, how Barack Obama is, I think that's what people want is means dealing with. And I think people have to learn that, you know, when the world is changing, you know, we all are real, you know, and we all have real agendas and real plans, but we all can't just say things like that. And I think that's what pisses people off. Like, I, I really wondered if people would see this clip, see Barack Obama in that light, and still be like, okay, I'll vote for him. I mean, after Bush, I think anybody would have voted for anybody. I would have voted for, like, a, a dog or something. But I think people need to get off that and focus on what they have right now and how they can help instead of complaining saying, well, this is a big-ass mistake with, with Obama. More saying, well, how can we help ourselves, our people, everyone, and the government? How can we fight the government and, you know, 
mold them the way we want them to be without acting a certain way or, you know, just sitting behind a computer yelling Illuminati every five minutes. So, with that said, Eric, and I'm off this. Peace.